Welcome back. Today, we're creating a simple but fun pumpkin. Why a pumpkin? Seasonal items like this can have a higher chance of selling, especially around Halloween. Pumpkins are always in demand, and by the end of this lesson, you'll have a marketable 3D asset that you can put up for sale. It's a great way to start small, but still create something valuable. You don't need to overcomplicate things sometimes. A simple prop like this can be the perfect way to kickstart your 3D side hustle. So, let's dive in and get started. And before we begin, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you never miss a new lesson. Let's get started. First, we'll delete the default cube. Then, let's quickly revisit our last lesson. We'll press Shift plus A to add an object, and this time, we'll select UV Sphere for our pumpkin. Next, we'll turn on the proportional editing function, which makes adjusting the mesh smoother and more natural. As a reminder from the last lesson, press 1 to switch to the front view. Now, let's select the top vertices of the sphere. Press G to grab, then Z to constrain the movement along the Z axis, and gently push the top of the mesh down. Do the same for the bottom vertices, press G, then Z, and push the bottom mesh up slightly to create a basic pumpkin shape. To isolate the top part of the sphere for the pumpkin's stem, select the top circle of vertices. You can either press C for circle select or use box select with the mouse to highlight the top faces. Now, press E to extrude the top faces upwards for the pumpkin's stem. Press G to move, then Z to keep it constrained to the Z axis. You can scale it down by pressing S and adjusting with the mouse. Next, we could delete the bottle faces of the pumpkin. And we could isolate the stick from the top of the pumpkin to adjust the overall pumpkin shape. Press S then Y to scale along the Y axis, refining the shape of the pumpkin and stem. Switch to Edge Select Mode and press Alt plus right click to select alternating edge loops. Scale these loops down slightly to give the pumpkin that classic irregular, bumpy shape. For a smoother visual, press Ctrl plus B to bevel the edges, softening the transition between loops. Next, let's smooth out the top and bottom of the pumpkin. Switch to Sculpt mode and press Shift plus right click to smooth the mesh where needed. To close the gap at the bottom of the pumpkin, press F3 to bring up the Blender function menu and type Grid Fill to close the hole. After that, right-click and choose Shade Smooth to soften the appearance. Back in Sculpt mode, use the grab brush to fine-tune the shape of your pumpkin, adjusting any irregularities. To enhance the pumpkin's look, apply a subdivision surface modifier from the modifier panel under the Generate category. This will smooth out the surface even further. Switch back to Object Mode to apply the changes, and then return to Edit Mode to start drawing the eyes, nose, and mouth of the pumpkin. A quick tip here, use the original grid to outline these features instead of the knife tool. This makes texturing and game engine export slash import easier.
Once you've outlined the eyes, nose, and mouth, delete the selected mesh to create the holes. To add thickness to the pumpkin, use Alt plus right click to select the inner edge loop. Press E to extrude, then S to scale down. You can switch to wireframe view to adjust the interfaces more easily. Use G plus X or G plus Y to move the interfaces as needed. Finally, to fix any shading issues, select all the mesh, go to mesh, then normals, then average, and then choose face area to create more uniform shading. And that's it. You've just finished modeling the basic shape of your pumpkin man. When I started in 3D, I was balancing it with a full-time job as an accountant. Time was limited, so efficiency became key. I couldn't spend days on one model. I had to find joy in making simple things quickly. This pumpkin is the perfect example. In under 10 minutes, you can make a basic pumpkin, sell it for around $2, and easily make $60 an hour if you sell just five. If you add a rig and spend about an hour on it, you can price it at $12 and still hit that $60 per hour mark. The trick is to keep things simple and efficient and find satisfaction in finishing projects. You don't need to overthink it, just complete one task at a time and enjoy the process. Now, let's move on and give our pumpkin some textures in Blender. First, head over to the Material tab under the Properties panel and click Add New Material. For the base color, Change it to a dark orange and adjust the roughness and metallic values to achieve a more realistic look for the pumpkin's surface. Next, let's select the loop around the eyes, nose, and mouth that we cut out earlier. After selecting, add another new material. Change this new material's color to black and click Assign to apply it specifically to the selected mesh. For the pumpkin stem, we'll assign a separate material. Add another new material, change the color to dark green, 
and this will create a distinct color map for the stem. Finally, let's add a new sphere and smooth it out to create a light bulb inside the pumpkin. Assign a new material to the light bulb, but this time set the color to green and adjust the emissive color and strength to give it a glowing effect. With the textures set, let's move on to rendering. Use what you learned in the last lesson, press zero to switch to camera view, and don't forget to lock the camera to view. Adjust the camera angle to get the perfect shot. and you're done. Your pumpkin is ready for rendering and even selling in the marketplace. You've just created your pumpkin, and it's a great start. Remember, it's not about making one perfect item, it's about building momentum and a strong portfolio. Each project you complete adds to your body of work, leading to real opportunities. Of course, one pumpkin cannot easily make a sale, but I will teach you about how to upgrade your pumpkin and make it sellable in a future lesson. Stay focused on small wins, and the more you create, the better your skills and portfolio will become. If you found this lesson helpful, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss the next lesson. Let's keep going and build something amazing together.